Hi, my brothers in Christ. This is Jonathan with the Hope Movement, and this is Man Up for Christ. So today we're going to be just keeping something very simple um, and short, and we're going to be talking about the thoughts of men. And um, what we're talking about is that we oftentimes think as men that um, we know what's best. Um, you know, our our opinion is is the best opinion always, um, and we can't um, gleam information from um, others, um, whether it be our wives or um, those around us, our pastors, um, and and just wise counsel, and number one, the Word of God. I think oftentimes we, we even those of us that know that the Word of God is sufficient, it's inerrant, um, we often uh, neglect to turn to the Word and say, okay, um, is this, is my thoughts in line with what the word of God says? And so this is something that we need to be conscientious of on a daily basis. Um, and the word of God is, is quite sufficient, um, to interest and bless the souls of men throughout all time, but novelties soon fail. In other words, um, that we, we can, we can try to, um, in our own imagination, we can we can come up with these great ideas, and um, whether it be in ministry and trying to create things that are going to draw people to Christ, or um, things that we're going to try to do to be able to get our kids to be interested in um, in in the things of God, um, come up with things in order to get our wives. Um, you know, passionate about the word and passionate about being a doer of the word. And we try to come up with all these kind of things. Um, and, and those things fail. Um, and oftentimes our thoughts, um, sometimes they may seem like good ideas to us, um, but they're not in line with uh, the word of God and the will of God. Um, and so uh, Charles Spurgeon once said, you may shed fine thoughts as trees in autumn, cast their leaves, but there is one who knows more about your thoughts than you do, and he thinks little of them. Doesn't scripture say the Lord knows the thoughts of man, and they are vanity? Psalm 94, 11. To liken our thoughts um, to the great thoughts of God would be a gross absurdity. Um, would you bring a can your candle to show the sun? Uh, and so this is something that's to, to remember. Would you bring your nothingness to replenish the eternal awe and awe uh, who is God? Is, is it better to be silent before the Lord than to dream of supplementing what he has spoken? The word of the Lord is to the thoughts of men as a garden is to the wilderness. So keep within the covers of the sacred book and you are in the land which flows with milk and honey. So why seek to add to it desert sands? This is something that is so important for us to remember and to recall. And, um, and so just looking at the scriptures and we go and we say, okay, this is what my, this is what I think. I think this is the best, um, my decisions are the best way, the, the only way, uh, my opinions are the only opinions that matter. Um, but then we look at the scriptures and we understand uh, who we are as, as men, um, as humans, as fallen um, sinners, um, saved by grace. And, uh, and you look at Romans 7, 23, and it says, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. It's this battle that we have, and we're going to be talking about this in the, in the coming sessions um, in, in regards to the putting on the armor of God. And Romans 12, 1 through 2 is a well-known verse, and it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And then here we are to rem remind ourselves that you know, our sinfulness and and, and to always put our thoughts in check and in comparison to the word of God. And it says, do not be conformed to this world, but by, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, by that by testing you, you may discern what is the will of God. So in other words, your will is not 
the best way and your your ways is not your the best ways your mind needs renewing and then it finishes and says regarding the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect his will his word his thoughts is good and acceptable and perfect in ephesians 4 22 through 24 says to put off your old self which belongs to your former a manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. So there we are again about renewing the mind. And it's also talking about putting off your old self because what is our, our, our thoughts, just as we just read in Psalms, that is vanity. It's, it's self-centered. It's focused upon us rather than focus upon those around us and their best interests. And number one, uh, what God wants for us. So we always need to be comparing our thoughts to the thoughts of God. Second Corinthians 10, five says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, including our own arguments and lofty opinions and take every thought captive to do what? To obey Christ. And then finally, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. So this is something that I hope that is an encouragement to you as you think upon uh, these things. And as you make decisions, uh, I just pray that we, we, we just know that we're all in this and we, we all have these times where we have to make decisions. Um, we need to, um, we need to uh, always Turn to the word of God and make sure the truth of God is the only treasure for which we seek. And the scripture is the only field in which we dig for it. We cast our anchor in the haven of the word of God. And here is our peace, our strength, our life, our motive, our hope, our happiness. God's word is our ultimatum. So I hope you have a blessed week and I look forward to talking to you soon. Grace and peace.